What follows is a presentation based on an excerpt from my book, The Science of Agency, How Science Lost Its Edge and How to Sharpen It. In this book, I explore the intricate dynamics that have led to the current state of science and propose actionable solutions to revitalize its core principles. If you're interested in diving deeper into the ideas discussed here, you can find links to both the ebook and audiobook in the description of this video. Thank you for joining and let's get started. When elephants lost their place on the consciousness spectrum, a parable of unsustainable mechanistic success. Once upon a time in a vast sprawling savannah, there lived a herd of wise and majestic elephants. Since the time where these wonderfully conscious beings came into existence, these elephants had learned to live in harmony with their environment, understanding the delicate balance of life. They traveled across the plains, consuming just enough vegetation to sustain their health without depleting the ecosystem. The trees and plants, in turn, benefited from the fertile soil the elephants left behind. It was a balanced relationship, and both the elephants and the environment thrived. Everyone on the consciousness spectrum had the transcendent awareness and behaviors that worshipped God. However, as time passed, a curious notion started to permeate the elephant herd. They began to observe the tiny, almost invisible creatures that buzzed around in the damp soil and water puddles, the bacteria. These microscopic beings had a unique way of life. They replicated at an exponential rate, consuming everything in their path without any apparent thought for tomorrow, because when their particular food source was consumed, they simply go dormant in wait of their next opportunity to thrive. How unfortunate that those observant elephants did not see that part of bacterial behavior. Some elephants, awed by the rapid growth and obvious success of these bacteria, started to wonder if they were living their lives all wrong. What if, they thought, elephants should live like bacteria? Why walk miles for sustenance when they could just take over an area and consume all it had to offer? Why be content with steady sustainable growth when they could explode in numbers and dominate? The new ideas spread like wildfire. Elephants began to cluster in regions, overgrazing and stripping the lands bare. The once balanced cycle was now disrupted. Trees were uprooted, rivers were clogged, and the fertile soil was eroded away. But with their newfound strategy, the elephants saw immediate growth. Their number swelled, and for a brief period, it seemed like they were achieving unparalleled success. But like the bacteria that consumed all available resources without thought, the elephants soon found themselves standing on barren ground. The once lush savanna turned to a wasteland. Food became scarce, water sources dried up, and the once majestic herd of elephants began to suffer. Their immense size, which was once their strength, now became their weakness. They had forgotten their true nature, and in trying to mimic a life form so different from themselves, so far removed from their place on the consciousness spectrum, they brought ruin upon their home and themselves. This tale serves as a stark warning to humanity. Much like the elephants, we too are a product of materialist ideas about our evolution. Darwin used the magic of human perfectibility and shaped our focus towards the pure survival end of the consciousness spectrum. It is today clear to all our strength as humans 
does not lie in mindless consumption and exponential growth, but in understanding, adaptation, stewardship and collaboration. The allure of mindless, godless perfection allowed us to be too successful, not as humans, but successful like bacteria. But in neglecting the lessons of our history and the intrinsic balance of our ecosystem that all the ages of humanity were able to maintain, we risk turning our home into a wasteland. But the lesson from this parable and this entire book are far more than just environmental. It is about what it means to be human, of forgotten memories, the lost essence of the elephants. In the wake of their misguided venture to live like bacteria, the elephants faced a sobering reality. The once abundant plains stood desolate, a stark contrast to the thriving wide spectrum ecosystem of yesteryears. But the damage was not limited to the environment alone. The very essence of what it meant to be an elephant had been eroded, leaving a gaping void in their collective consciousness. Traditionally, elephants were known for their long memories, their intricate social structures, and their gentle yet powerful presence in the animal kingdom. The matriarchs led with wisdom, sharing tales of old, guiding the young, and setting roots for the herd. The older males became the teachers of all the juvenile male elephants, bringing order to their competitive behaviors. These tales and roots weren't just stories or paths. They were the distilled essence of generations of lived experiences. They contained lessons from the past, ensuring the herd's survival and conscious celebration of their place within a vast spectrum of living organisms. But in their pursuit of mimicking bacterial behavior, much of this knowledge was lost. Young elephants grew up without the benefit of the matriarch's stories, or the discipline and wisdom from the elders passed on to the bachelors. The ancient roots, which were once etched in the memory of every elephant, became faded sketches. The lessons from the past, once clear, were now a blur. The social structures began to unravel as well. Elephants, known for their close-knit families and deep emotional bonds, found these ties weakened. In their rush to consume and expand, they had forgotten the importance of unity, compassion and collaboration. Rituals like mourning the dead, which were integral to their society, became rushed or forgotten altogether. This disconnect from their true nature had profound psychological implications. Elephants began exhibiting signs of distress with increased aggression and anxiety. The songs of the savannah, trumpets of joy, camaraderie and communication turned into sounds of confusion and lament. The loss of their cultural essence also affected their ability to interact with the environment. Without the old tales to guide them, they struggled to find water during droughts, to locate safe paths during migrations, or to avoid danger zones. Their once symbiotic relationship with the savannah turned into a nightmare as they grappled to find their place in a world they no longer fully understood. The parable of the elephants serves as an austere reminder for us. When societies drift away from their uniquely conscious principles, values, and histories in the pursuit of purely mechanistic perfection, they risk losing even the flow of their very identity. It is a far deeper lesson as well. It is about our place on the consciousness spectrum when this deep rootedness is neglected, then we lose more than our culture. We lose our humanity. It is not just the environment or resources at stake, but the very soul of humanity. And as the only organism who is able to do the science of agency, 
our behavior can destroy most of the life found on the consciousness spectrum. In rediscovering our roots and embracing our true nature, our true place on the consciousness spectrum, we find the compass to navigate challenges, the wisdom to make sustainable choices, and the bonds that make life meaningful. The elephant story is a call for introspection, urging us to remember who we are and to cherish our legacy before it fades into the annals of time. Just as it was unnatural and unsustainable for elephants to behave like bacteria, so too is it for humans to adopt strategies of unfettered consumption and growth in the name of mechanistic survival. We must remember who we are, where we come from, and the responsibilities we bear. Only by embracing our true nature and working in harmony with our environment can we hope for a sustainable future. This parable seems to be the parable in the minds of many humans today as we experience the upheavals of the powerful and concerned humans. These upheavals might not be successful from our own point of view, isolated in our current moment, but if we look at human agency and we look at what we are actually able to observe as scientists, as observers, then we might be able to change our point of view. In closure, let us consider what is holding us back. Let us find new ways of looking at the world and find the best ways of doing the science of agency. There is work to do, but there are new ways of thinking to incorporate into our old ways. There are old things that needs to be sanctified and redemption needs to be granted. Because this is not an easy thing in a world like the world we created, we will end this book by using the language of materialist orthodoxy and demonstrate how it can be modified in search of our true place on the consciousness spectrum. 